Thank you. I work at George Mason University. I'm here to tell you about sustainable ways to grow food. And by sustainable, I want to make it clear, means for the planet, to benefit the planet, also to benefit future generations, but also literally to sustain the effort that you're going to put into this. So why George Mason? Well, I went there as a student, and I had no idea what I wanted to study. And I decided to check out the greenhouse and the gardens, because I thought that sounded cool at the time. And I immediately just fell in love. I absolutely just threw myself into the field. I learned everything I could learn about plants and gardening. And I immediately started teaching others and started leading. And I realized I was a natural leader. So they hired me as a student intern to run the gardens. And when I graduated, they ended up hiring me to run the greenhouse. I discovered that growing food was my absolute passion and my calling, particularly teaching others about growing food. I realized that is my life goal. I really, really enjoy it. Um, so when I graduated, they hired me to fix up this greenhouse. It was empty, and they decided to grow food in there in an attempt to have that food served on campus in the dining halls. So to do that, we had to use hydroponics. And the reason is because it's super clean. In soil, you still have a risk of foodborne illness, especially when it's a public garden, it's not secured. Um, in the greenhouse, it's locked. And in hydroponics, there's no soil. And that's the definition. So you can see here we have these uh, PVC plastic channels with the tubes that flow the water through the plants. And this is our romaine lettuce here. My chefs absolutely love it. And the roots, you can see directly because there's no soil. It's growing directly in the water. And we add nutrients to the water. And the plants grow on average three to five times faster than in soil plants. Um, another benefit is that there's no weeding, there's no digging, there's no shoveling, there's no need to really get dirty. It's super clean, super simple. And I mean, how many of you have ever done any gardening before? How many hours have you spent weeding in the summer? I mean, several hours a week. And on an industrial farm, what do they do? They're not hand weeding. They spray it with herbicide chemicals to get rid of these weeds. Um, so with hydroponics, no weeds. That saves us a lot of time. Um, this is our Swiss chard growing. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you can see that PVC channel there. No weeds, just, just the plants we want. Um, also, you can harvest very easily. You can see that the channels are at waist height. We just pull them out, and we can start harvesting them right there. So there's no bending down to weed. There's no bending down. Every time you want to look at your plant, it's just right there. And we harvest every Tuesday. A great benefit is that it's automatic. So I can leave over the weekend. I don't have to water my plants. There, this is how it works. Basically, there's a reservoir tank or a stock tank with a pump. This machine um, monitors the fertilizer as well as the pH. And there's a pump that pumps the water through. When the, when the water drains, it goes back to that tank and it recirculates. So it uses 10% of the water that would be required outside. So you're saving a lot of water here. Also, you can grow a lot more food in less space. It's a lot easier to stack your produce. And with our rising populations and the limited amount of land we have, especially good soil land, um, hydroponics is truly a, a really good solution for food security. You can see here that there are four shelves in our microgreen rack. The microgreens only take two to three weeks to grow. They're very fast. So some of the waste that we produce in the greenhouse, like the dead leaves and roots when we're done with them, actually get composted in our worm compost. And I always love to share this because you can compost indoors. You do not need a yard to compost. And the way you do it, you have these specific reg wiggler worms. And we have these worm bins. You can buy both of these on Amazon, really cheap like 20, 60 bucks max. And um, basically the worms break the, the material down for you. And within three to six months, it turns into beautiful soil. And you can put your plants directly in that soil that you created for free. The average person creates 1,600 pounds of trash every year. That's just one person's trash. So a lot of that weight is coming out of the scraps in your kitchen. 
And every day you have these scraps that go into the waste system. And usually you're actually paying people to take it away for you. Well, really, that's a very valuable resource. And if you can do it indoors with worms, it's super easy. You could have it under your sink. And that decomposition process is happening right there. And we have them in the greenhouse to divert some of our waste. Now, the soil, I can't use it in the hydroponics, but it goes into our gardens. And so the other gardens that I manage on campus, one of which is the Innovation Food Forest. And it is right in the middle of campus. Students can walk through. We also um, lead volunteers there. And it is, it is designed using permaculture, which is a term coined in 1980 by Bill Mollison and is the words permanent and agriculture combined in one. And basically, it's the concept of using perennial plants, which means they're permanent, like an apple tree. You plant it once, and it grows back for you every year. It goes dormant over the winter, and in the spring it comes back up. It grows fruit for you without you really having to do anything. So this is the key concept of permaculture. There are a lot of other techniques, and you can learn about them. There's a permaculture design certification course that I've done um, that are happening all over the globe, and it's really rising in popularity. It's site-specific. It has to do with... Um, the specific land that you may have and what plants will do well there, as particularly the microclimates, what areas are more wet, which areas have more shade or sun, and placing the right plants there. It also has to do with placing the plants that will work well together. Some of you may have heard of companion planting. Uh, have you heard of the three sisters? The corn, beans, and squash. Your squash cover the ground and keep it moist. Your corn grows really tall, and your beans actually climb the corn. Individually, Growing them, you might be wasting space. You're going to have to create a trellis for your beans to climb. With the three sisters, you're utilizing all your space, and they're working together. So that's the concept of a guild. And comfrey is this really great plant that's really common in guilds because it's basically a self-fertilizer. It has very deep roots that pull the nutrients from deep underground, stores it in its leaves, and then when the leaves decay in the fall, it's bringing those nutrients to the soil. So it's mulching for you, and it's fertilizing for you. So um, the persimmon tree in the back there will have comfrey near it. All, all of our fruit trees do have comfrey, and that allows us um, to um, not have to fertilize and not have to mulch as much. So the key is to, um, to grow food with, with minimal labor. And truly, growing your own food will make you happier and healthier. The sights, the smells, the health benefits of it, um, it makes me extremely happy. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. And you can get a hydroponic system, a mi little mini one, $60, and you can have it on your counter in your kitchen. You can grow food and, and, and harvest it right there in your kitchen. If you have a little bit of a yard, you can also use permaculture. So I highly recommend that you come to George Mason campus because you can take some comfrey to go to your garden. You could take some worms and bring them. I can show you how to do all of this hands-on for free. You can get training to do all these techniques at George Mason campus by volunteering, getting involved, and that way you can actually do it and you'll be, you'll be learning by actually experiencing it in real life. Thank you.